There is zero magic about it. It is a big pain. It was a source of tons and tons of frustration. But once I got it, man, was I glad I learned this skill. Hey there, and welcome to episode nine of Be Hooked TV. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm your host, Brittany, and my sole purpose here on this show is to help you get better at your craft. So if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to this channel. That way, one, you'll be alerted when there's a new video available. By the way, that happens every single week. But then it'll also give you the opportunity to leave me some feedback. Because my purpose is to help you get better at your craft, I need to know what you need help with. And you can leave that information for me in the comments section of any video of Be Hooked TV. So let me paint this picture for you and see if you can relate. You've made some number of chains, three or four, and then you fiddled with it and you've got that join. So you have this circle, which looks more like a lump of yarn. And then you worked some stitches into somewhere, hoping that it was in the right place as you're trying to crochet this circle. And then you finally get through it all and you've got this little hole right smack in the middle of your circle. That little hole is the reason why I finally buckled down and learned how to crochet the magic ring. So as the name would imply, the magic ring is appropriate when you're crocheting in the round and specifically a circle. Now you wouldn't use the magic ring if you're starting a project that's tubular in shape like a hat, bottom up style, maybe a sleeve on a garment, you wouldn't use it then. You would use it most often at say, the top of the hat at the crown section if you're doing a top down style hat. It's also used a lot in a migurumi. All right, so before we move into the demonstration, you'll need to get a couple of supplies so you can practice along with me. The first thing you'll need is of course a crochet hook and you'll use the size that coordinates with the yarn. And for the yarn, there's a couple things I want you to keep in mind when you're making your yarn choice to practice on. The idea is to set you up for success here. So the yarn will really make or break your experience as you're learning this technique. It's always best if you can practice the magic ring on a worsted weight yarn. That's because it's big enough that you can see, but not so big that it doesn't flow through your fingers. The other thing you'll wanna keep in mind is the type of yarn that it is. Now you may have seen a roving style yarn. You wanna stay away from that when you're practicing the magic ring for the first few times. Try to get applied yarn or some type of yarn that is twisted and is pretty sturdy because we're going to pull on it quite a bit and you don't want the yarn to break in the process. So we'll grab our working yarn, our tail. I'm steadying it with these two fingers here in the background. Now you'll let it flow through, but I tend to sort of pinch them together to keep some tension on the yarn. Now working with these two fingers, we'll wrap the tail around them twice. See, I'm kind of letting it flow through my pinky there in the background. I'll wrap it around two times. Now just take your thumb and hold on to the tail. We need some tension to be on both of these loops. So we need to secure this end and this end. Now slide your hook under both of those loops and the idea is to pull this one underneath this one. You'll have to wiggle your hook around a little bit to make that happen. I'll tend to just sort of swivel it around. And that is the first part, but we have to secure it. If we were to let our hook out of here, we would undo it. Now raise your pinky and your ring finger there in the background so that you can access that working yarn. You'll grab it with your hook, pull it through that little partial loop that was there, and then we'll do that one more time. We're creating a chain here. Now with that, things are secure enough that we can put this in a more comfortable position. So what I like to do is grab onto this little section of the ring with my two fingers, hold it there, I'll slide my fingers out, gather my yarn up like I normally do, and then I'll use these two fingers to put in the middle of the ring. 
If you're working with a single crochet in your ring, you won't need to chain anymore. We've already chained one. If you're doing a half double crochet, you'll make another chain. Or if you're double crocheting, you'll make two more chains. Let's practice with a double crochet because that's one of the most common stitches. So I will add two more chains and your pattern should indicate whether or not this chain three will count as a stitch or not. So part of what makes the magic ring magic is the tail down here. I'm always going to keep it steady as it is, so keep it in its same position with my thumb here. And you'll use this as a foundation to work your stitches. So let's do a double crochet. And that's all there is to it. For the purpose of our little practice here, let's just do 12 double crochets. That's pretty standard for a circle. And you can see I'm still holding on to that tail. I'm not letting it go anywhere. That's so important. And you can see I'm always catching both of those when I work my stitch. Now, once you have all the stitches you need to make for the start of your first round, this is where the magic part happens. Drop your working yarn. We won't really use that at the moment and grab a hold of that tail. You'll need to steady it in both hands so that you can pull on this and it will draw up the ring. So I like to just use my fingers here to steady it in the background. And as I pull the tail, you see how it's drawing up that ring. I'll continue to pull so it closes. And that's all there is to it. I would, at this point now, follow the rest of my pattern. If it says to join with a slip stitch to your chain three, you would do that. Now, if you notice a tiny little gap here in the middle, that's completely normal, especially if you're working with 12 stitches like we were here. The more stitches you have in the middle, the more noticeable that tiny little gap will be, but there's an easy fix for that. Just thread your tail on your darning needle and then run it around the ring. You really only need to go around one time, but it does need to be a complete circle. And you can do this with your crochet hook attached like you see here, or you can do this at the very end of your project. It's totally up to you. And when you go all the way around, we pull that again, it'll close it up. Now, if you don't get it right the first time, you probably won't. We'll be honest. If you don't get it right the second or the third or the fourth time, don't give up. I don't even remember how many times it took me to get it, to just finally work through this technique so that the, the ring drew up as it should and things didn't fall apart. Now, of course, my goal and my purpose is to teach you this technique because I love it and I think it's valuable for you as a crocheter. There are gonna be instances where you just won't get it. And that's completely fine because there's an alternative. I have a cheat method to the magic ring and I don't really love to encourage people to use it. I would love for you to know how to do the magic ring. But if you just can't figure it out, don't worry, I've got your back. You'll follow along with your pattern, but let's just work on a little practice swatch here. You will create four chains I don't like four because this number is a little easier to work with. Join with a slip stitch to your first chain. Pull that through. And this is what I mean by easier to work with. When you pull those apart, that big opening there in the middle, that's the middle of your ring and where you'll work your stitches. So let's just work with our same example here. We're doing a double crochet round with 12 stitches, I'm counting that chain three as a stitch. And 
This is probably the method you're used to working with without knowing the magic ring. And this is that dreaded hole we all hate seeing in our project. But here's the magic fix. Take your tail, thread it on your darning needle, and we'll run it around the ring. So around this row of stitches, and we want to work in the same direction here. The idea is to create a drawstring. We need at least one full circle. And when we get it all the way around, you'll just simply pull on it and it'll start drawing it up. Now you may wanna go around one more time to make sure it's nice and secure and fully closed. Now the magic ring is a tricky thing for a lot of crocheters. So if you are struggling with this technique, don't beat yourself up over it. It's just tough. But I promise once you get the hang of it, you'll never go back. So practice quite a bit. Don't give up, especially if you get frustrated, maybe walk away for a few minutes, but come back to it. I think it's a skill that you'll be glad you learned. That'll do for this week's episode of Be Hooked TV. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already so we can hang out again next week. And also don't forget to leave me a comment below if you have a topic suggestion or something that you would like to learn as it relates to crochet, knitting, or just yarn in general.